everybody. Welcome to Java Sessions. I'm Tim. I'm Paul. And we're here with Java Sessions to talk about business and life. Absolutely, folks. Thank you for joining us for another episode. I appreciate it very much. If you get a chance, be sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. Please leave any comments. We will get back to you. But for today's purposes, the first thing I want to do is I want to thank John Cooksey. John has been instrumental in helping us get our technical woes, if you will, out of the way. He's been gracious enough to let us use his studio here in Hot Springs. And John, we really appreciate the time and effort that you've given us and the opportunity to use your studio. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, mindset. So that's probably one of the most important things that we need to talk about is having the right mindset, because without it, uh, as soon as things get, get bad, you're going to quit doing what you really want to do. So it's important to make sure that you have the right mindset, uh, both to get up in the morning and, and keep doing this when the times get tough. Uh, there's a lot of points where it will get tiring. It can get boring. And as you're moving the uh, needle on, on doing this, uh, it's important that you get motivated every day. And motivation is something that you have to always add to it. You know, it's, it's not just a sometime thing because everybody gets down, but you got to get back on that pony again and, and just get going. Uh, absolutely, Paul. Motivation is probably the biggest key to getting anything done. I mean, if you think about it in, in your own personal life, what does it take to get out of, out of bed in the morning? Uh, you know, as an example, how many of us have literally heard that alarm go beep, 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 reach over and slap the snooze button? And I want to ask, how many times are you going to slap that snooze button before you finally get out of bed? What's the motivation? Is it because you got to get to work on time because you got to be at work in an hour? Uh, you know, or is the kids bothering you? Is is, you know, your noisy neighbor playing too much music. Whatever it is that motivates you, you've got to get out of bed. But for an entrepreneur, someone that wants to grow beyond a job, a career, and do something on their own, probably the most important thing is, is to find and develop internal motivation that keeps you going when things aren't going well. But one of the things that's probably important to that, honestly, straight up, negative, negative, negative influences in your life. That's probably one of the biggest things you have to get rid of is negative influences. And I know Paul will touch on that here in just a second yeah. about kind of what that is and give you a little more in-depth explanation on it. One of the things we want to bring to you every week is uh, we're, we're going to try and bring you some good uh, books that can help you move the needle a little bit and get in the right mindset and point you and give you resources and direction to what you're doing. Uh, one of the books we've got is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is uh, written by Robert Kiyosaki. And Robert's been around, I want to say, he's had his book out now for like 20 years. And, uh, you know, if, if you're not a good reader or you, you hate reading, get the audio version because there's a lot of these tapes out there that you can still get on eBay. Uh, the cool thing is this book is available very cheap used on Amazon, but again, you can get the audio versions. Uh, these, this book was used a lot to take people uh, and teach the, the right mindset and take you from an employee mindset to an entrepreneur and also an investor mindset so that you can move the needle and have the right idea and mentality of not just being a worker bee, but being a creative. So as you go through and read this book, it'll really open your eyes. And again, I can't say enough about this book. This is one of the first books uh, that I picked up. And in it, uh, he talks about, again, going from an entrepreneur mindset to uh, the uh, entrepreneur mindset, to an investor mindset. This book actually dates back to 1997. It's still popular today. Robert Kiyosaki, this, you know, it was true then, it's true now. You need to get rid of that employee mindset because if you're waiting for everybody to do it for you, you're gonna be screwed at, in plain and simple. So learning the fact that you need to get out there and if you really wanna be a success, it's up to you. There is no white knight coming down the road. There is nobody else coming to go and, and mm -hmm. rescue you. And if it's to be, it's up to you. So, uh, and the other part is nobody cares about this as much as you are going to care about it because 
Very true. What it boils down to is the fact that uh, even your wife, she might be on board, you know, but until you're making a buck with this and whatever you want to do, trust me, they, they think it's a hobby and <laughs> it, it's just the way it is. Uh, there was a, a show out. Now, if you look at Shopify, they got a uh, Shopify is, is a your own personal store. There's a software and stuff where you, it'll, they've got tutorials and everything that will help you go and, and develop a store. The cool thing was they did a documentary, and when they showed these people, these guys who go and say, hey, honey, I just quit my job, and we're starting a business today. The look on the wife's face was of sure, A, terror, and the, are you crazy? Is this thing going to make money? We're living in this nice house here, and now we got to go and do this, and so but you need to have the right mindset to also have the courage uh, to go and take that next step. Absolutely. That's what I'm thinking because w- without the, uh, the right mindset, the belief in yourself, you're going to just, as soon as it gets tough, it's going to, you know, get old quick and you need to know what your end goal is and start with the end in mind. And that's also part of mindset, knowing where you want to be. Absolutely. So, um, but let's circle back for a second and kind of touch on uh, the <coughs> negative side of things. Look, folks, life is full of negativity. Uh, let's look at our current situation. We have a COVID pandemic going on. For a lot of people, it's now getting into the winter months. Here it's rainy and it's cold today here outside the studio. So it's very easy to slip into a negative mindset, whether you're an employee, whether you're an entrepreneur, business owner, student, whatever you might be. That mindset is going to be key. It's what gets you up in the morning. It's what keeps you going. But what are some things you can honestly do to attend to that negativity? So I think one of the things is you need to go and surround yourself with positive people and get rid of the negative. Uh, It means along the way, you might have to drop some of your friends because while they they might have your interests at heart. They've given up on their dreams. So they're like, oh, do you really want to do that? Very true. Very true. And you just need to go and, and keep that at a distance. And my theory on that is treat negative people like hazardous waste or like radioactive waste in that, you know, when I was in, in the fire service, the one thing they taught you was time, distance, and shielding. Limit your time uh, with the, you know, the bad material. Uh, distance yourself from it. And then uh, shield yourself, you know, try and avoid if, mm-hmm. if at all possible. I mean, we all go to the family functions and they're like, is that still taking off yet? Are you still doing that? And then it, it, it just gets old. So the one way to do it is just go make an appearance. And then I'm trying to think of another way, but just get out of there. Uh, it's not that you don't love them, but they're not going in the same direction you are. So you need to go and set boundaries, not only for yourself, but also for those who are coming into your life. So, you know, and that, that very same thing also goes true for the things and information you consume uh, right. as well. It's not just the people, but if you're sa- surrounded all day by negative news and information, I mean, look at our news outlets. A lot of what you hear is sensationalism and a lot of it comes off being negative because that's what sells news. That's what sells papers. That's what sells online subscriptions. So it also becomes important, not just with people, but also in what you read and what you listen to and what you hear and what you see. Because whether you realize it or not, if you listen to the same negative things in the news or music or whatever it might be over and over and over again, over time, it's going to create a situation to where you look at everything negatively. It does have an effect on you. And that's why I don't watch the news anymore. I I figure if it's real important, somebody's going to call me. Uh, (laughs) That's just one of the things you got to take into account. Uh, one of the things is, you know, how much of this really affects you? Focus on what you want. Uh, one of the things with mindset is it's an ongoing process and you need to always refresh it. Uh, it's kind of like in, Tony Robbins talks about when he talks about mindset, you know, you go to an event and unless you keep up with it, and take action right away and keep the momentum going it wanes and it just falls falls apart so one of the things you need to do is constantly reinvigorate yourself and 
just keep that positive thing going. I try and read something positive every day. Uh, I'm probably one of the biggest readers when it comes to self-motivation and those kind of books. Uh, I, at the firehouse, I used to get from the guys, you're always just a company man. And I was, I was always positive about my the firehouse and the, the place I was at. If you're not positive about where you're working, about where you're at, you need to change. I used to tell these guys, get the hell out. You know, I, I had one guy who was at a, a policeman and he hated being a cop. And I was working with this guy and he goes, yeah, I'm finally vested. I, I've got seven years in, but I hate this job. But I get four weeks vacation. I looked at him. I said, dude, you got 25 or 30 more years. You got to do this before you can retire because you're at that age. I says, get the hell out of here because you're just driving yourself crazy. Not to mention you're driving us crazy. <laughs> And God knows what's going on with your family who has to put up with you. So, again, if you are not in the environment you want to be in, change. Get your mindset together and say, am I where, am I, where I want to be at today? Where do I want to be tomorrow, maybe? Maybe you have to go and, and take a gig where, you know, it, it just pays the bills right now and puts a few pennies in your pocket but robs your soul. Uh, we've all been there. And until you can get there, keep working at it and trying to stay positive. And again, we talked about it. Start separating those that, that are negative in your life and learn to say no. I think saying no to some of these things, you know, if you go to a, a party where you know everybody there is going to be, you know, Mr. Doom and Gloom and everybody's just complaining about their job, learn to say no. Hey, can't make it tonight. Uh, yeah, we got something going, whatever. Or if you do go, drop off your bottle of wine, make all the pleasantries, say hi, and then get the hell out of there. Uh, I had a boss that was like that. He didn't want to be around the employees. He'd always show up, stayed his 15 minutes, and then left. He didn't want to be surrounded by the negative people who are all liquored up, drunk. He didn't want to have to see that, so he might have to talk about it later. So, so it became. So he, was in, he was an in and out real quick. Yeah, he he was one of those in and out guys, and but it worked for him. And then, well, let, let me ask you, Paul, while we're talking about the subject of mindset, um, it, for the, for the people, for you and me, we're fairly self motivated, so we have this internal motivation already going. I mean, we we talked about it in the last podcast in the last episode. We we were already knowing what we wanted to do. We had at least an idea of the direction we wanted to go. Uh, but for a lot of these folks, they don't even know how to get that that mindset started. They're so into it. They're so under the water in it that they can't even see daylight on it, much less, you know, go, hey, I'd, I'd like to do this. I want to try this. So how do you help them? I think one of the ways you help them is get them around positive people and get them out of the environment is the first start. I mean, if you're in a job that is totally dragging you down, uh, I know this guy works at a place and he puts in like 70 hours a week and he just needs to get out of there. Um, true. So <laughs> it's, it's true. one of those things where, uh, and we, we're kidding around here, but it's one of those things too, where, you, you know, you, you meet the, your friends who work at companies and they, they get told those magic words, you're going on salary, uh, which translates to you're getting screwed. Uh, because if they paid you overtime for all the hours you put in, they'd go broke. Uh, but by the same token, it's like, why do you want to you know, endure that kind of stress? I think it's the one thing that helped me along. I had a friend, uh, his name's Daryl Hill and Daryl is a guy who works with people and helps them get past what, what I call mind blocks. He calls them gifts, gifts that somebody else gave you, you know, like guilt and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but on the mind block thing, he goes, look, you got to come with me to this event. And I was like, geez, Daryl, I don't know, you know, spend the money. Do I want to go to this event? He goes, look, <laughs> it's going to be a world of good. I went to this event. Not only did I get to meet the, the guys who I'd been following online for like five years. And these guys were kind of like my rock, you know, internet rock stars that I knew. I mean, guys like Matt Basic, there was uh, Armin Morin, who was uh, one of the legendary internet marketers. This guy's only 44 years old and it's, he's got an 18,000 square foot home where 
he does all his internet stuff from. He's got a complete studio in it. I got to hang with these guys at this event and just absorb some of their energy and get to meet them. I got to meet all these other entrepreneurs. Every one of them was positive, man. You don't go to an event like that. The people who are at these events are there because, A, they got the right mindset. They're positive, And every one of them wants to help somebody along the way. It's the old thing of when God sends the elevator down and brings you back up, it's your job to send the elevator back down and bring somebody else up. So when you're at these events, most of these people, I'd say like 90% of them, are super giving. I was fortunate that at the event I was at, the two guys who I really enjoyed, I got to, and these guys get anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 for a day of consulting. They get $1,000 an hour or ten grand a day for consulting. And I got to hang with these guys for three days. I got to sit at a table with them and just jaw with them for like six hours. And all it cost me was three beers, you know. And the knowledge I got, the rapport I built with these guys was incredible. And then you hear their stories of how they got started. And it just boggles the mind because you find out everyone, everybody has a lot of commonality. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites is this guy out of uh, California. He's out of San Diego, and his name is J.R. Fisher. If you get the chance, look up his YouTube channel. And J.R., we happened to click. I happened to meet him at uh, another conference. I went on this thing called the Marketers Cruise. And it was 470 international marketers from around the world, and it was amazing. Well, I had met him, and I and he said, hey, I'm going to be at this event. And I said, hey, I'll be there. And we went, we had cocktails. And I asked him, I said, JR, man, I says, how did you get started in this? He goes, you know, I was working for this guy, and I hated my boss. He goes, he was an idiot. He was into, you know, the drugs, the drinking, and he was just horrible. He was a horrible, horrible person. So I said, I got to find my way out. And he now sells uh, survival food and, and other internet items. And he started at, you know, as a single dad at a, almost 50 years old, or maybe he was 50 single dad. At, uh, and he had the two kids and he built this on the side and it, yeah, it took some work. Uh, but he had his why and mindset down pat. He knew he didn't want to get the hell out of where he was at and he couldn't stand being at that job. Again, there are jobs out there that maybe they pay good, but they're robbing your soul. You know, and it's just, you go, you know, it's hard to get up. And it's like the, the you know, the title, you know, the dreaded Monday. There's a book out, you know, no more dreaded Mondays. And uh, uh, forget the guy's name. I think it's Jim, Will, uh, Jim Edwards, uh, who's got the book. But in it, it talks about, you know, life's too short to go and live it. A, in, in somebody else's uh, world. And the other part of that is when you're working for somebody else, you're making them rich. It's time to go and work for you and make yourself rich. Uh, that That's part of it. And if if you want to, don't want to own your own business, that's okay. But find a job where they appreciate you. I mean, there's, and everybody has that thing because it's outside a comfort zone. You got to get comfortable, not only with your mindset, but with your, with the, the ability to change and move outside your comfort zone and have the mindset to accept that. Uh, is it scary? Yeah. Anytime you do something new, it's, it's, it's it scary. It's absolutely scary. So you got to go in and uh, move the needle and be self-motivated enough to go and say, I'm going to do it. You know, it's just like when you're uh, a young buck and you're you're looking at, you know, you're kind of scared to talk to girls. So you practice. I, I know when I was younger, I, I had a problem because I stuttered and I was shy and almost introverted. And I practiced. I made it a point to go to the mall, uh, which was popular back in the day. Not, not so much anymore. Uh, but I would go and just go into stores and go up to women and just ask them some questions and just get used to asking them. I mean, of course it was easy when you know, you're not going home with them. What's, what's the difference, you know? So, uh, <laughs> it made it easy a little bit, but, 
<laughs> as you built up your courage. And that's what mindset helps you do is having the right mindset helps you build up your courage. It, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, it does. It really does. But one of the things as I was kind of listening to you kind of share with us here, one of the things that, and you'll notice with, with Paul and myself, we're big readers. We read a lot of books, a lot of materials. We consume a lot of uh, journals and online articles um, from various people. Um, and honestly, that's probably one thing to encourage everyone to do. Find some books or some authors of these entrepreneurs that have blazed the trail that you want to go down. At least take some ideas from them, learn from them, get some experience from them. So maybe you're not making the same mistakes uh, that they made, but find a way to improve yourself on a daily or weekly basis. Carve out, maybe you're struggling, you know, because at first, when I first started, um, Paul was kind enough. He has a library of way, way too many books. <laughs> he really does. Um, and he gave me a lot of books. And it took me a little while to kind of get through them and, and get some traction and reading and learning and, and growing with them. But I would encourage you, find a book, a periodical, something that piques your interest, that helps give you some positivity in your mindset. I think one of the ones that did it for me in the early days, and he's been around, God, he's got to be around now going on 40 years, Tony Robbins. You can go on eBay or Amazon and find some of his material. And I'll never forget uh, one of his programs. I, I lucked out. I was at a thrift shop and I found the cassette version. Well, I was working at a police department doing code enforcement. It was a job that I, I really wasn't happy because I was uh, working in an economically challenged area, uh, basically a ghetto, and I just wanted to get the hell out of there. So I happened to see this 21 cassette uh, of Tony Robbins, and it was like the personal power. I forget what it, the title of it was, but I got it for like three bucks. Well, fortunately, the car that they gave me to work in had a uh, combination cassette player and CD player. So I listened to 21 tapes, and it had to be like 30 hours of tape recordings of Tony Robbins as I drove around because I was in this car for eight hours a day almost. So I was fortunate enough that that's what I listened to. You know, other guys were listening to rap or whatever. And I'd be listening to this. It's just like when I was at the the firehouse. Guys would be playing video games, watching some uh, different things on TV. I'd be in the next room reading about success stories, about people who have gone and done what I wanted to do. Uh, there used to be a guy, uh, Yannick Silver, who used to do a thing called The Underground. You could still find some of his uh, CDs and uh, tapes uh, or DVDs on uh, eBay. And in it, he would bring in these people who are like unknown millionaires and they would tell how they built up their business. And it's like, you can pick anything as long as you know that's what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. You could sell dog bones. And if you you got the marketing and the know-how and the right mindset, you're gonna be a millionaire, all right? It's like anything. There's products out there. The guy who came up with the pet rock years ago. <laughs> That's very true. Very Goofy true. thing where he put it in a box and you don't have to feed it. It's your pet rock. This guy made a million dollars. This was back, I think, in the 70s. But if you look that story up and it's incredible. But when you start reading success stories and you can feed your mind off of the success of others and see where did they go wrong, but then use a tactics uh, and strategy uh, mindset and take do the takeaways. Uh, I think one of the best ones uh, I showed you was the uh, Russell Brunson's 30 day challenge. Mm -hmm. And the title of the book basically was, or the premise of the book was mm -hmm. if they lost everything, he found 30 to 35 of these entrepreneurs and they're all in different fields. It was probably the best money I spent. It wasn't cheap. It was a hundred dollars for this book, but it came with, you know, additional uh, side product, yeah, materials that with it. But the cool thing was, it was like getting thirty-five business plans, and I was just blown away. And they all had some good takeaways. So what I did was, I took the book, I highlighted all the parts that I, that were common to all of them, and the things I wanted to do. And then I went back, and while this guy might not have done what this one does, I liked the idea what everybody brought to the table and there were just great takeaways. 
Uh, again, I can't talk enough about some of Russell Brunson's books and uh, his partner, uh, Jim Edwards, who does a book on uh, copywriting. If copywriting is get, wants to be one of your things, get that book, Copywriting Secrets. It's like 10 bucks. Uh, best money around. Uh, but again, it gets the creative juices flowing mm -hmm. and it, it allows you to imagine. And that's the key thing. Imagine where you want to be. I mean, what well, is your ideal day? Well, you know, honestly, if, if I wasn't uh, working a regular job, um, as some of y'all will get to know that I, I have a regular job. And as, as we say, I'm working on my part-time millions at the moment. But if I honestly had my druthers, and I would get up in the morning, go work out, get a nice breakfast, come back refreshed, energized, start my day probably with a with a video or, or blog article, you know, spend a few hours doing some research, go play with the family, the kids, go do something along those lines, take care of life issues, come back in the afternoon, do another one. You know, that, that would be, you know, my ideal, do that a couple of days a week. And to be honest, after that, if everything's going like it's supposed to and, and everything's working within my business model, then I should be able to literally put in two to three days a week and the rest of the week is spent doing, well, anything. Working on this bad suntan or uh, any number of things. But again, for me though, it's mindset. I'm just starting this journey. So my mindset is critical. It's very important to stay positive. That's why I love uh, you know, Paul, because he's feeding me all kinds of, of books and materials, but probably the single most important thing I can tell you, and I know we're going to have to wrap up the mindset section here in a few minutes, but to be honest, for those of you who are just starting out, because for me, I've been at this just under a year now trying to, to build momentum. And a lot of it's been a lot of homework, a lot of reading. I, I've made my business plan probably 20 times and learned huge you know, <laughs> X's through whole sections that, that didn't work or wasn't going to fit and find a partner that you can bounce ideas off of. I would say an accountability partner, but it's not really the right word for it. You don't want someone to keep you on task per se, like calls you every morning and says, did you do X? Did you do Y? You don't want them to do that. You want to find a partner that's going to help you with the mindset and help you stay focused because he's he or she's going to get to know you and they're going to know on the days when you're having a positive day and they're going to call you even on the days when you know you've had a bad day and he may not say like Paul did this for me the other day it was what was it last Thursday it was just a disaster at work I was there for almost 17 hours I was exhausted I was tired Paul calls me up checks on me realizes I've had such a horrible day at work doesn't even bother to ask me anything about you know, was my, you know, was my next section on, on the article I was writing or working on, was it ready to go to look at or whatever? He didn't even do that. Okay. He asked me, Hey, tell me what happened with your day. He honestly gave me a chance to brain dump the negative day, you know, which was probably the best thing I could have done. So I, I would encourage you, if nothing else out of mindset, if all the things we've shared over the last, you know, 25 minutes or so with you, if nothing else, find a partner that's going to help you keep your mindset focused. Along with that, it's like uh, you had just said, you don't need a, a, a partner to motivate you. If you're not where you want to be at, that's motivation enough. And that should be a motivation enough. If you're not where you want to be at, damn it, it's, it's gonna, up to you to go and move <laughs> that needle because ain't nobody going to come along and just throw it and give you, you know, a silver platter. And knowing that, there are so many people that, you know, and the other thing is take action now because everybody's like, you know, I'll do it when I'll do it when the kids are older, I'll do it this, you know what? There's never going to be a perfect time. The time to start is now the time is to start planning what you want to be and dig the well before you need it. Because I'll tell you what, given this current situation that we're seeing now, people are out of jobs. Uh, you need something to fall back on, even if you start part-time. And that's one of the things we'll be touching on in our future episodes is moving the needle part-time. And we're developing a course to help people and it'll be uh, available in the future. But one of the things is how to get started part-time and leverage your time. The one thing we learned uh, today is that with the, the, the new internet and 
the things like that, you can go and play with the big dogs and compete with them. But again, you still got to bring your game because everybody out there is thinking the same thing. Everybody's in the same world. And it's who's going to have the better mindset, better training, and who can leverage it the best. So absolutely. Uh, given that, uh, what do you think? Wrap this uh, uh, I, session I, up. I think it's time to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, like what you see, please like and subscribe down below. Also, leave some comments. Honestly, folks, we look at the comments. We respond to all the comments. So if you want to see something, you don't want something, you want to debate us, argue with us, whatever, I'll take anything you want to throw at us in the comments. And once again, folks, from Java Sessions, I'm Tim. I'm Paul. And y'all have a wonderful cup of coffee. Take care, gang.